Good mid-afternoon. It's 3.14 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. I'm T-Speaker 222 XRP Future Millionaire with the side bet on XLM and Future Digibyte. OG, you need to pay attention to this update, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to thank the 216 members of Tom's Army who sponsor each and every one of these updates. That's right, by joining Tom's Army, you ensure that we don't have any paid promotion or advertising and there's no self-interest or, or there's no outside entities that force me to do this content in a certain direction. So I want to thank especially the 216 members of Tom's Army and the three new members between uh, yesterday and today. I really appreciate it, but we have a serious issue here. The national media, and I was here live during the Jerome Powell speech, and we had about 70 to 80 people watching it live with me. Um, and we heard Jerome Powell at the very end of the speech say, in December, we will stay the course. Even though in the Fed minutes before he spoke, it was saying 50 basis points. At the very end, if you watched until the very last five or six words he spoke, before he started the one-on-one -on -one conversation, he said, we will stay the course. And then the very first response on the one-on-one -on -one conversation, who he was talking to live during the press conference, the guy said, just to reiterate, I, now that you cleared that up, I won't even have to ask you about the rate hike or which direction you go, because he said, we have to stay the course. So the markets are getting this wrong right now. Not only that, I'm watching Bloomberg. They're lying. They said as early as December, they're going to cut the rates or the rate hikes are going to go down. That's untrue. He said we're staying the course in December. Jerome Powell said we are staying the course. Don't get this shit twisted. It's going to cost you in the long run. Jerome Powell said we are staying the course in December. He did not say, like all of social media is saying right now, and how Bloomberg is saying and some of these big news outlets are saying. I waited a few minutes to come on and do this update because I was on during the live. I did a live while the press conference was going on. And I appreciate everybody who was there during the half hour. It was amazing. On YouTube I did it. It's loading right now it says on YouTube. So you'll be able to at least watch that. And see my reaction to it as it's going on. But you're being manipulated and lied to because I know 99% of you haven't seen it and you're coming to watch me to see what he said. At the very end of the press conference, he said, we're staying the course. And then his interviewer, first thing he says to him when the interview, the one-on-one -on -one starts, is now I don't have to ask you which direction you're going with the rate hikes next month. Because there's no question, he's going 75, and I think the markets are getting it wrong. They're pricing in 50, and I thought it sounded more hawkish. I thought he sounded hawkish, not dovish. In my personal opinion, he sounded hawkish at the end. And all the media is telling us dovish. I think they're looking for exit liquidity right now. And XRP is a perfect example right now because we're still unfinished in the move. We've talked about this 433 move, but what would that mean? For XRP to get up there, that might take Bitcoin to take the upper route a little bit here. Let me go to the other Bitcoin chart. The upper route. And first, it's probably going to get us to 17,674. And then the question is, can we come back up in this range? Would we have the testicular fortitude to come back in this range? It's a good question. I don't know. Okay, and then I want <clears throat> to look at my spot Bitcoin chart. And I, I do this on the side, but I don't really show this chart as much because I usually focus up here on this part of my trading view at Bitcoin USDT or Bitcoin USD. But just, I think it's time for me to pull this chart up farther so I can actually pay more attention. And I'll show you guys this. This, this is one that goes way back to the beginning of time. So if you're looking for a very accurate Bitcoin chart and one that goes way back, I'll show you this in just a sec. I'm going to move this up into here so I can have three reference points. So, and they're all charted slightly different because we're coming into another area now and that's why this one's more relevant. It hasn't been, but... And I've even done the recent points on here, so we can pretty much cover the basis. But if you look at this from way back, this you can come all the way back. And you can get this from September 10th, or in 2010. So you can get this from the very beginning of Bitcoin. And this would be the Bitcoin USD dollar. It's the spot index chart. So it's on TradingView. That's the one I would recommend if you're looking for, you know, the nuts. 
basically. So if we break this down into a smaller time frame for Bitcoin so that we can see exactly what's going on. And then I'm going to have a little heart to heart with everybody. So we're in this little rising channel, it looks like we're creating. So about 17,265, we can bounce around. And until we come below about 16,400, we're going to remain in this channel. And then if we do break up to the top parts here, the ultimate top here, and in this area, we're coming down. So we're about 20,000 in this area, but we've got a lot to go past before we ever got to there. And that's measuring it from way farther back. But these are different style charts. So these are measuring different points and it's only relevant if it gets back within this zone. And now we'll see if it bounces out, but I don't typically use this chart. So we bounced over here. We've got main points when we get up towards 19,000 as well. 19.5 because we're pretty there's not a lot in this area 17,662 is in here and then higher up is 20,400 plus got a little bit at like 18,800 but nothing like that. I'm like that's something that I think it's going to stop at so what we need to focus on right now is the fact that there's a lot of misinformation going on even in the like on Bloomberg like I was saying I'm watching it and it comes free on my Samsung TV Live, the Samsung Live, and it's it's incredible what they're saying on there. You know, about how they could lower rates, the rate hikes, as early as December, when he clearly said at the end of the speech that he's staying the course in December. Staying the course would mean at least 75. So I think they're under-analyzing it, and the market is not acknowledging that we're more than likely going to have a 75 base point rate hike which means that they're baking in at 50 or less. So what's going to happen when it overdoes it, overshoots it? Very uncomfortable right now. Me personally, as everybody's pouring into the market, I'm pinpointing a short opportunity to start pouring into the short. And if XRP gets the 433 and sits there with this volume, I'm, that's going to be where I'm absolutely going to probably attempt to start this uh, layered an approach. This chart has so much stuff going on in it, but I need it on here for a reason because I need to know these micro levels. So hopefully this update helped because there's a lot of fun and there's a lot of noise going on. And I have a feeling that we're gonna get a, we're gonna get bent over on December. With all the stuff going on with the exchanges, all the exchanges going bankrupt, the news with I mean, Coinbase today, how how everything is pumping today with the nerves that should be unsettling on Coinbase, with the possibility of Gemini going bankrupt, with what happened with FTX, with what happened with BlockFi, with what happened to Invictus Capital, or Invictus Capital, I mean, and that comes on the backs of the three arrows. I mean, there's a debacle going on and people are just pouring their money in. They're pouring their, what money's gonna be left? So pay attention to this because you're being lied to and missed, they're, they're, they're lying to you. They're using your hopium against you. If they were being honest, they would say, the volume is not looking very good. In the three hourly, we've had one push up and that's because of the hope that has been spewed onto the market right now. We'll see how this pans out, but I don't really see much of a blueprint Unless Bitcoin is poised to go over 18,000 or the 19,000 area, that gets XRP much higher than the 44 cent level or 43.3 or 43.5. But if we get back in here, obviously it gives us the opportunity to come back up to 52 or 53 if we're back in the bull flag. But we've got to get up there. I have a, this is making me very nervous right now. So I'm XRP Future Millionaire. Hit that motherfucking like button. I'll update you shortly. Make sure you watch the live when it uploads. It's uploading as we speak. And in the video description below, you can find ways to join Tom's Army. You can join me on BitGet, uh, Maxi, and Uphold. And with Uphold, make sure you fill out your W-9 before December 9th. Otherwise, you're not going to have access to your funds. They're compliant with the U.S. regulatory framework for taxes, which is what you want. So make sure you're transparent and make sure you're paying your taxes and make sure you give a second look to Uphold because they're being transparent with the U.S. government right now and they're going to hand over and they already are giving out W-9s. That means that the government's going to get their taxes so you're more than likely going to have Uphold in the future and they're already Web3 enabled. And this was an update they did overnight two nights ago leading into yesterday. So make sure 
you're doing this and you're paying attention. Hashtag the FUD stops here. I don't put no bullshit anywhere. And I'm going to tell you the truth. And what's going on right now stinks. This stinks. This stinks. It looks like they're trying to cost a lot of people money. So you pay attention and you guard your portfolio. Because this stinks right now.